regardless of what my scores look like, regardless of the credentials that anyone would try to use to make me feel as if I'm disqualified and I shouldn't be here, I worked my tail off to be here and I deserve to be here and take up space and nobody can take that right from me. What are these schools doing to cultivate spaces where black students feel supported, where they have networks in which they're able to express concerns, express different issues, and not only have them be expressed, but be heard and have tangible actions Taken. Hi you guys, welcome to my channel. It's Michelle Amaray. And if you're new here, hi hello, my name is Michelle. So today's video is really gonna be much more of a heart to heart, and I kind of just want to get some things off my chest and really create like a safe space for students of color, black students, to really just come here and be able to identify with other applicants in the same situation, other students who've experienced different things, and you know, just kind of have a space for us to vent our frustrations if that's what you choose to do in this space. I initially didn't think that I was going to film this video. I just woke up and it was just so heavy on my heart to just come on here and speak. And really the reason why I even had this idea in my mind mind was because yesterday March 10th 2021 um, a Georgetown or two Georgetown law professors there was a video that was released of them engaged in a conversation and I'll go ahead and play the video for you guys to go ahead and see for yourselves I hate to say this I end up having this you know angst every semester that a lot of my lower ones are blacks happens almost every semester mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, come on, <laughs> you know, get some really good ones, but they're also usually some that are just plain at the bottom. It drives me crazy. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah, unfortunately. So yeah, I was extremely enraged and disheartened by the conversation. And it just really had me thinking about like the reality of like going back into a predominantly white institution. And not only that, but entering into a field where 2% of people who are in that field look like me and are black women. And so just thinking about all these different aspects, like it really got me thinking about just how it affects like where I ultimately will choose to go to law school, how I will navigate my law school experience, how I will navigate the legal field and so many different things. So I really just wanted to come on here and kind of vent and like air some things out for you guys. And if anything, I hope that if you're also in a similar situation, you'll know you're not alone. So I do wanna start off by talking about my personal experiences with institutional racism. So this isn't anything like really new to me like I know that there are, and th what's crazy is that this is just a conversation that accidentally got publicized how many thousands of other conversations like this are being held on the daily how many professors and people in authority people in places of power and influence have these similar prejudices and biases within them that are literally affecting people that look like me and other minorities. So this is just like the tip of the iceberg, if anything. But yeah, going back to my personal experiences, I graduated from the University of Texas at Austin in 2019. And literally, oh my gosh, growing up in the South, especially going to a school like the University of Texas at Austin, and I'm gonna say UT for short, Austin is kind of, you know, praised as this super liberal city where, you know, people are just very, open and very liberal and all those different things and stuff and that was just not my experience at the university of texas at austin like yes it does have very liberal aspects to them but i've encountered the most overt acts of racism at ut than at any other point in my life so i'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys some of those experiences starting from my freshman year of college when trump was elected president in the 2016 election around that time i believe there was an affirmative action bake sale that was held on campus by an organization on campus called the young conservatives of texas and so basically this made headline news as always ut is always on the head <laughs> ut is always 
always making national news for some BS or the other. But literally, let me just go ahead and explain it. There was a bake sale that they were having and they were selling like cookies and baked goods and stuff. And they had a big board that said things like, okay, if you're white, you get the cookie for a dollar. If you're a black, maybe it's 50 cents. Native American, 25%. Basically trying to say how much easier it is for people of color to access opportunities and stuff because of affirmative action and how much it's more difficult for people who are white. And I think that's just really funny given that white women are the biggest beneficiaries of the affirmative action system. But I mean, hey, what statistics? Why does evidence matter? So literally being a freshman and not really knowledgeable a lot about a lot of these different things and different viewpoints that people have because understandably like you grew up in your little bubble of your hometown and then you integrate into this big campus with so many different people from different backgrounds and with different ideologies and mindsets so it was definitely a wake-up call it was very shocking i cried I cried because it was like, I know how hard I worked to get to UT and I know the kind of effort that I put into it and the kind of effort I was putting into my classes. So to literally have it be thrown in my face that I'm here because of the color of my skin and it made it easier for me than other people it was really really disheartening and really made me feel like i didn't belong and like i'm not gonna go too far into the affirmative action discussion because i think it's very nuanced and very complex and then also i'm a first generation american my parents are immigrants and so i feel like even within this conversation there's a certain level of privilege that you know i have to admit because the truth of the matter is that my ancestors weren't slaves. My ancestors weren't involved in the civil rights era working and giving their lives, sacrificing their lives for the sake of people like me to even be able to enter into this country. So benefiting off of a system that wasn't necessarily intended to benefit like me, me, yes, I do feel some type of way about it. But I just wanted to go ahead and let that be known. So even moving past the affirmative action bake sale, literally it's like there were two UTs. There was white UT and there was black UT and it affected our, I felt like it affected my UT experience down to even like where I lived. So at UT, you know, West Campus is like really close to the central campus. And then there's another area of town called Riverside, which is further out, you have to commute. And it tends to be like students of color who live there just because it's a lot more affordable. And so having distinguishing factors like that really made it feel like I'm having a much different UT experience than like the average white person and even venturing into west campus i hated going into west campus and that's where like a lot of like the white frats and stuff were i would hear stories and actually like people literally had experiences of like at night going to parties and stuff and like drunk frat guys i don't even know if they're drunk but they would throw like bleach bombs so they would put bleach in like bags or like balloons and stuff and throw it at people of color as they were walking through west campus from like their porches and stuff. And it's like really sick things like that that really made me feel like I didn't necessarily belong here and this wasn't as much my school as it was theirs. And probably the craziest experience I had at UT was I think around 2017, there was a stabbing on campus. Like um, there was a student, um, God bless his soul, who was stabbed to death on campus around like, um, like a main gathering central area on campus. So a black student um, who was, now we know was mentally distressed and had mental health issues, actually ended up stabbing this white student to death. And following the stabbing, I literally was so scared to leave my dorm. I didn't go to class that day or the following day. And it wasn't necessarily because of like the physical threat and the stabbing and stuff, because from our understanding, it was like a one offshoot type situation, but a lot of the racist situations that were arising as a result of it. So there started getting rumors being spread around campus that it's black people targeting white people. And I think like white students were being told to not like wear their 
Greek letters and stuff because they were being targeted by blacks and that um, even on campus, like what was the sickest part about it? There was posters being put all over campus that had like a caricature of like a black person kind of looking like a monkey who had like a knife in hand and was stabbing like a white person in the picture. And then it was titled Around Blacks Be Wary. So the fact that that kind of sentiment was just outwardly all around campus, you know, and this is the place where I'm supposed to be walking around, going to school, going to classes and stuff. Like I was extremely distressed, extremely scared. And I just honestly felt like this was just not a school for me. So now thinking back to the Georgetown video and the professors and the conversation they had, you know, it wasn't a shocker to me. I have definitely encountered and seen worse than that. But it's like, as a black student, it's just exactly exhausting. It's just exhausting because literally I'm coming to school to get an education and keep it moving. But having to navigate all these different trials, all these different obstacles that make it so much more difficult than to just be a student and focus on my academics. It's just so mentally exhausting. And even now, like reflecting back to my UT experiences and like the different things and stuff that happened, I will definitely say that this kind of stuff definitely has an effect effect on you like it takes a toll on you it drains you of energy that you should be putting towards your academics and accelerating yourself as a student and so to hear professors sit here and express such racist sentiments towards black students it's just oh my goodness like we get it from our peers we get it from administrators now we get it from the professors who are supposed to be teaching us to begin with and i'll even go ahead and say it like this i have slightly more respect for people who can be overtly racist and just express their racist ideologies as opposed to those who express them in more covert manners because it's that covert racism that really really endangers and is super Super harmful to us because we don't even know where it exists we don't even know how to attack it how to dismantle it and especially when it's hidden within the educational institutional system like that has such major implications for students of color in regards to grading and therefore opportunities that they're able to access and therefore jobs and so on and so forth and so now as a black student that's in the process of applying to law schools and hearing back and deciding where I'm gonna go spend the next three years of my life, I'm starting to reflect more and more on my undergraduate experience and realizing some of my non-negotiables when choosing a school and what's necessary for me. And maybe this might help other people out, but some things that I'm looking for and some questions that I'm asking are what are these schools doing to cultivate spaces where black Black students feel supported, where they have networks in which they're able to express concerns, express different issues, and not only have them be expressed, but be heard and have tangible actions taken. Because the truth of the matter, Georgetown isn't an anomaly. These kind of sentiments and these kind of people are everywhere. There are probably at every school in this nation that's predominantly white. And so I feel like there's really no running away from it, but there's definitely steps that administrators can definitely do to prioritize students who are affected by these things and really ensure that they feel welcome in these schools. I personally know that one of my biggest factors for choosing a school are how active their black law student association is that to me is extremely important to know that I have a community of black students who are also committed to seeing each other succeed and do well in these environments especially at PWIs I think those type of organizations are our holy grail Furthermore, faculty representation is really important to me, looking and seeing the numbers of how many black faculty members are there and what measures schools are taking to increase the faculty representation and stuff, that's also really important to me. All in all, racism isn't going anywhere tomorrow. This is a phenomenon that has been around for centuries in this country, in this land, in this world. So I think it's so important to, especially as black people, to have healthy mechanisms put in place 
on how to exist, you know, how to cope, how to be able to create spaces for us to be nourished and to feel protected. And I think more importantly, it's so important for us to lean on each other and create spaces for us, create spaces where people who are coming after us will be able to have an easier time than we did because we've equipped them with the resources and the knowledge that they need. And that's one of the reasons why I have my YouTube channel because I really do hope to shed light and shed awareness on like a black female legal experience and stuff and really motivate more people to really be encouraged Courage and know that they're not alone if they're also seeking to pursue a legal career in this country. I really love this quote by Toni Morrison that says, I tell my students when you get these jobs that you have been so brilliantly trained for, just remember that your real job is that if you are free, you need to free somebody else. If you have some power, then your job is to empower somebody else. This is not just a grab bag candy game. And that is just so real and so true. And even navigating this space and navigating this journey and getting into the legal field and stuff, like I really do carry that in my heart and really make it a point to do the best I can to ensure that, you know, I'm not going through this stress and through this hell for the sake of doing it in vain. It's for a purpose. We're not backing down. We're not running away. We're not going to feel disqualified that we shouldn't be here, but we're going to do the best we can to stand firm in these spaces because we know that in doing so and putting up the good fight we make it easier for the next generation to come in and do the same and continue this process and one thing that I'm really starting to prepare myself before I even start law school is realizing that racist ideology is probably going to be sitting right beside me in classes literally teaching me in classes who knows whatever other capacities it might be present in but what's most important is to always maintain an understanding that I deserve to be in this space, regardless of what my scores look like, regardless of the credentials that anyone would try to use to make me feel as if I'm disqualified and I shouldn't be here. I worked my tail off to be here and I deserve to be here and take up space. And nobody can take that right from me. Even on my YouTube channel, if you guys follow me, you know that I've been very open about my LSAT score, my LSAT journey and my struggles and stuff like that. And I've even had someone say on one of my LSAT videos, like oh yeah of course you only got a 159 black people are like the inferior race and don't have the mental capacity to be able to do well on that exam <laughs> and like i'm laughing now but it's like this is literally my reality as like a black aspiring lawyer i'm going to be in contact with people who have mentalities like that i'll even post a picture of like a conversation that somebody had with the girl on reddit i think she posted like her law school admissions results and somebody messaged her and goes you only got in because you're black blackity black black that's it <laughs> and literally these are going to be our future classmates so if anything it's just more reason to work hard kick ass do the best you can to really be at a place not to prove to these people anything because they're really inconsequential but to make it evident to yourself that you deserve to be here and you deserve to occupy this space so that's all i really wanted to say um i'm extending all my love to other black law students pre-law students other people in pwi institutions and whatnot you are loved you are valuable you deserve to be there you work your ass off to be there and nobody can tell you anything else so thanks so much you guys for giving me some space to just go ahead and rant and get some steam off um please go ahead and carry on the conversation down below tell me what your experiences have been at pwis and any tips that you have for other students navigating these spaces and i will see you guys in my next video bye you were bad girl and your friends bad too oh you got the swag sauce you drip the swag goo you were bad girl and your friends bad too oh you got the swag